So what does a data scientist actually do? How much money do you make? What skills do you need? And will AI take over our jobs? Sit tight because I'm going to be giving you all the tea. Hey there, my name is Vivian and I have been working in the data science industry here in Sydney, Australia for the past seven, almost eight years. And today I'm going to be diving into exactly what I do as a data scientist in 2024 and how my roles have differed across time. I want to give you a very realistic picture into what a data scientist actually does day to day, what to expect in your role, the highs, the lows, really just everything that you might need to know. And this way you can make a much more informed decision if this is a correct career path for you. Let's get straight into it. So before we jump into the actual nitty gritties of my job, I just want to mention that your role will vary significantly depending on the industry and the size of the company that you work in. So I personally started off my career working in much larger organizations and over time I have transitioned into smaller and smaller companies. Um, I would say that if you work at a larger organization, there is a lot more structure, a lot more siloed teams. So you might have your individual data engineering teams, your data analytics teams, data science teams, product teams, marketing teams. They will all be separate and you'll have a dedicated person to support every function across the business. There is a lot more structure, so the work that you do is very well defined. But in saying that there is a lot more hierarchy and it does take a lot longer for projects to get approved. And on the other hand, if you work in a startup, you could have a lot less resources and you might end up being the only person in the entire data and tech team. And because of this, you will have to take on a much more diverse range of work across the entire data spectrum. So you might hear the term wearing multiple different hats across the organization. This could include pulling in raw data from your APIs, setting up the entire ETL pipeline for your business and pulling the data into the warehouse directly creating visualizations for your stakeholders, running reports, and also possibly building predictive machine learning models. But it really depends on what your business needs. But yeah, I would say that at a startup, you can definitely create a lot more impact and see your projects through end to end. But it does mean that your roles can get quite hazy at times and there's a lot less structure and people to learn from. So having said all that, my generic one sentence elevator pitch summary for the data science role would go something like this. We extract and analyze data to identify insights for our stakeholders and also use historical data to build models that can predict future trends. And ultimately, these insights and models that you've built will help your business make better data-driven decisions. So don't worry if none of what I just said made any sense. Let's now go through a real-life example. So think about a dating app like Hinge or say Bumble. Data scientists have developed a backend algorithm that tries to prioritize the probability of two people matching. So behind the scenes, there is a recipe that tries to look for patterns between the people that you swipe for and your own profile. So as an example, if you've swiped on many people who like cooking, the algorithm will then learn over time and try to showcase you more people who also like cooking. So basically what this algorithm is doing is it's trying to make an educated guess, constantly learning the changes in your preferences and trying to improve its suggestions for the users ultimately. So now that we've gotten this definition out of the way, let's move on to what my role is and all the work that I have been doing throughout my career. So if you've watched my productive day in the life of a data scientist video linked up here, you will know that I currently work in the product and tech arm of a growth marketing company here in Sydney, Australia. So our business has a portfolio of customers who we run marketing services for to help them grow their own customer base. And my specific team owns an internal platform that helps our clients better visualize and aggregate all their data together and really just understand all their marketing efforts. So my immediate team has just five people and this comprises of the entire software engineering, data analytics, data science, data engineering and product teams that you would find in larger organizations. And because of this, we each wear different hats when necessary. I would say that 70% of my time is spent on product development. Now, what this means is I'm often working on features that will improve the platform for our customers. This includes building machine learning models that can be implemented. As an example, identifying which customers are more likely to make a transaction next. I will also work closely with the engineering teams to productionize these models and of course, monitor the performance. Um, there is also an element of product manager work in terms of scoping out, you know, what are the new features to implement and what our users actually want to see. And of course, every business right now is tapping into AI. So we have been, you know, building out tools and products that better utilize generative AI, ChatGPT, to help us streamline our processes and generate more insights for our clients. I'll be talking a lot more about prompt engineering, ChatGPT, and how I use ChatGPT for work. So please subscribe if you haven't already. So moving on, my remaining 30% is spent on business insights and just supporting stakeholders across the organization. Um, this work can range from analyzing existing data to find trends or helping our non-technical team automate some of their processes. 
And there are often times I have to pull together reports for stakeholders to present to their clients. And because my company sits within digital marketing, this requires heavy domain knowledge of fields like SEO and Google ads. So metrics like, you know, top ranking keywords, cost per click, impression share percentage, return on ad spend, get dropped around all the time. So now that we've covered off what I do in my current role, I thought I might as well chat to you what I have done in my previous roles in a slightly different industry to give you a better insight as to how different the work can be across different industries. So I used to work at a fintech company where we had a couple of products that helped individuals better manage their finances. And my focus was in credit risk, essentially the risk that comes with people being unable to pay their loans back. So I would say 50% of my time was spent on the internal risk strategy and product development. So this again includes building predictive models, but this time to identify say customers of high risk and target them accordingly. I also worked closely with the marketing and product teams. As an example, we would segment our customers into high, medium, low risk, and then work with the marketing teams to send them personalized emails. And obviously once a model is live, time also has to be allocated to model monitoring and performance. And another 30% of my time was spent supporting the launch of new product strategies. So working very closely with the product managers to do hypotheses testing, you know, is this feature going to be well received? Will it be profitable? How long should we be running the experiments for? What is the sample size? What are the success metrics? And of course, a bunch of post campaign analysis. Once the product has gone out live and running, is it actually successful? What is the dollar impact? What are the open rates, conversion rates, and all that. And lastly, the remaining 20% was spent doing ad hoc requests for our stakeholders. So I often had to pull numbers very last minute for the executives for a business case or a market update. And these could take a fair amount of time depending on the complexity of the task. And because a lot of this was market facing, I had to really ensure a good understanding of my data and also reliability in my output. In terms of my technical tools, I use SQL on an everyday basis to extract and manipulate the data in our databases. So right now I'm using a platform called DataGrip, but I've also used things like MySQL Workbench, DBeaver and Databricks heavily in the past. And in terms of building machine learning models, I use both R and Python in either Jupyter or Databricks notebooks, and I've also dabbled with MLflow within Databricks themselves. In terms of version control, I've used things like SourceTree, GitHub, Bitbucket, but they're all pretty similar. And I also operate quite a bit in Google Sheets or Excel, depending on which version, mainly Google Sheets these days um, for like pivot tables and VLOOKUPs, especially when it comes out to building charts for presentations, doing model monitoring, and also just data deliveries for our not so technical stakeholders. Now I am well aware how over glamorized the entire tech industry is. So I thought that I would quickly touch up on the realities of work as a data scientist. So the first one being machine learning and AI is now everywhere and is most certainly still a buzzword. Everyone thinks all you do is build fancy machine learning models, but that just isn't the reality. You'll be doing a lot more data cleaning than you expected and wondering why your queries just aren't giving you a specific number. You also have to work with stakeholders who just don't really value your time sometimes. They think that pulling data is like magic and you can just get a number and report for them so easily. And you'll end up getting a bunch of really ad hoc, urgent last minute requests, which can really derail you from your other responsibilities. So you really have to prioritize and time block and just push back. You might also be brought into many other side chats that can really be solved with a simple Google search, like where does this number come from and what does it mean? Because in reality, I don't know either. I've got to Google it as well. So why can't you just do it? So sometimes these things can be very frustrating and I've actually got an entire video on the harsh realities that nobody really talks about. So I'll link that one in the cards up here. As much as I will complain about last minute data requests, there is still a lot that I enjoy about this field. So overall, this role is very intellectually stimulating. I feel like you can be such an integral part of the core decision making process in your business and really drive that impact. No two projects will be the same, so you will be constantly switched on and you can also work in a variety of different industries. And lastly, I have to admit the salary and the work life balance is really good as a data scientist. I think the average data science salary for someone with maybe two or three years of experience here in Australia can be getting at least $130,000 to $150,000 per year pre-tax. And this can go all the way up to the mid 200,000s once you have a lot more experience up your belt. And if this video can get to 1000 likes, then maybe I'll make a separate video sharing all of my salaries across all the different roles in my life. So make sure you like this video if you haven't already.
Moving on, are data scientists still in demand? So 10 years ago, data science was named the sexiest job of the 21st century. Is this still the case? I would say yes, the role is still very in demand as there is data everywhere these days. Every time you click a link, open an app, and in a world where information is knowledge and knowledge is power, organizations have been hiring data scientists to analyze the data to improve all of their products for a competitive advantage. You can really pick and choose any industry that you want, whether it be you know, healthcare, agriculture, finance, banking, marketing, and so on. The world really is your oyster. If you want to change, just change industries and apply your skills there. Speaking of different industries, I just returned from a digital marketing conference last weekend and a speaker at the conference said that everyone's going to lose their jobs due to AI. And I don't believe that for a second. Yes, there are so many low code, no code tools that have arisen over the past couple of years that can definitely help you do a portion of your work. But after using some of these platforms, I can confidently say that our roles are not going to disappear, they will just evolve. I've realized these AI tools are good at what they're told to do 80% of the time, but only if you ask it the right questions. And on top of that, there will always be a need to implement these low code tools into your platform and integrate it with your own data and then communicate the value back to your stakeholders. So to summarize, AI will not replace you, but the person who is now using AI will replace you. And if you haven't already, I would highly recommend you reading up on prompt engineering and ChatGPT because if you don't keep up now, you really might get left behind in five years time. So moving on, what does it take to be a great data scientist? Now, I've already got a video up on my channel on the key skills you need, so I'm gonna link it up here, but I would say what differentiates the good data scientists from the great ones would be your attention to detail. Now this one is a no brainer, but so much of your day to day is spent coding and doing data deliveries and building models. You really have to ensure the reliability of your data, being able to critically check your own code to make sure it's handling every single edge case. Um, try to put yourself in your manager's shoes, um, double check your code, stress test it, make sure it's reliable no matter where you're running it, what data sources you are using, try and preempt all the possible mistakes that you might make. Next, the ability to communicate and influence is so underrated. Remember that your executives don't care about how technical your models are, they care about the business value that your work is going to add. So when you're sharing your work with your stakeholders, please focus on the tangible results that your model can deliver, whether that's dollar value or percentage improvements. You've also really got to be business focused. Really try to understand the how and the why that your work is going to bring your business closer to their business goals. Don't just go ahead and be the data monkey that does a data delivery without understanding the why. That is so, so important. And lastly, I would recommend proactively keeping up with all the changes in the data space. As an example, adopting ChatGPT and learning about prompt engineering that will help you stay a lot more relevant and at the forefront of decision making. So that is all that I've got for today. I hope that this video has given you a much better insight into what a data scientist actually does on a day-to-day -day basis and helps you make a more informed decision if this is the correct career path for you. And if you are an aspiring data scientist wanting to break into the field, I would highly recommend you watch this video on the screen right now as it covers everything you need to know to break into the data science industry in 2024. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.